Data engineering is a highly sought after job role where even interns working at Amazon can make the equivalent of $100,000 a year. The only problem is there are so many tools listed on job descriptions, it can feel like even at this point, job descriptions themselves are inflating with the sheer amount of tools that are expected to be known. And let's be real, none of these skills were probably taught to you in college. I mean, I personally didn't learn about data warehousing until my first job. At best, I knew a little bit about databases, but in no way would I be able to pass a SQL interview with my college database course. So in this video, I wanted to provide some of the courses that I have enjoyed over the past few years, whether it be understanding SQL better, Spark, or something like data warehousing, that's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Now, in order to learn anything, I personally have a specific process that I like to follow in order to kind of best keep all of that knowledge stuck inside of my brain. So let's kind of discuss this process first before going any further. Actually, you know what? I have a better plan. Give me one second. So let's break into my recipe for learning anything. And it's an iterative two-step approach that I recommend taking that can be applied to anything that you really wanna learn. The process consists of learning it and then using it. Thank goodness for the concept of import. But one more kind of layer I wanted to add onto this was, well, the concept of layering. That is to say that Specifically, in technology, instead of learning specific tools, oftentimes it's good to build a solid base of fundamentals and then kind of layer on top of that. For example, let's talk about the all popular tool, DBT. DBT seems to be very popular these days. And when I used it first, I realized really all it is is kind of a combination of Docker, some SQL, some data modeling, because you're going to likely need that when you're building your models. And that's really about it. So if you already understand Docker, SQL, and some concepts in terms of data modeling, it'll be pretty easy for you to pick up. And that comes from the concept of layering, you know, kind of like a pyramid. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se, it's... So let's start at the bottom of this pyramid in terms of skill sets, really focusing on your first kind of three core skills. And then after kind of each set of courses, I'm going to reference a few projects that you might want to try for said specific skill set. For the first skill set, you're going to have to learn a programming language. Now I'm always kind of split on where to start in programming. Python is great because it's so easy to get started, but learning another language like let's say Java will teach you a lot of the fundamentals that honestly in Python, just get abstracted away or are just simpler in general. So for this section, I wanted to recommend three different kind of options. Uh, the first is Scala for Beginners, specifically by Rock the JVM. I think his course does a great job of covering the basics of Scala. It's only about 11 and a half hours and you'll learn everything from functions to object-oriented programming. And he even has a few exercises in there that are great. Again, this is only 11 and a half hours, so it's very quick, but it's enough to get you started. In particular, I enjoyed the section where he focused on functional programming and how it can be utilized, going over everything from an anonymous function to higher order functions, and just breaking it all down so that if you're kind of new to this concept, you can understand exactly what's going on. Overall, this is a well put together course. Now, it is important to point out that depending on the company you want to work for, Scala or Python might be a better choice in terms of what you are learning. For example, Python is a great choice if you're going to interview it. Facebook. And in fact, I always like to point out the fact that if you use something like Java, when going through our coding interview rounds, you're at a strong disadvantage because it just takes so much longer to program just because it takes so much longer to initialize everything and set everything up. So in general, depending on the company you're focusing at in terms of interviewing will change what coding language I'd recommend you learn. But if you do want to learn Python, here are two options, one free and one paid. For the free option, you can go with programming with Mosh's six hour intro course on Python. Hi, my name is Mosh. And I'm gonna be your instructor in this Python course. In this course, you're gonna learn everything you need to get started programming in Python. He really goes over a lot in that six hours, so it's very packed and he ends up doing this like every year. So there's like a new one that comes out every so often. You do probably want to make sure you're looking at Python 3. Um, I'll put a link below, but it's a great course to get started with. He goes over everything from data types to for loops, to functions, to classes, and so on. Just about everything you need to know to get started in terms of Python. From there, you likely can take on some of your first projects, which we will get to here in a second. But before that, you can check out the University of Michigan's Python 3 course on Coursera, where they go over a lot of the same concepts they will talk about things like your basic data types, 
functions, classes, inheritance, and a lot of other important topics. At the end of the day, it will be about how you apply these topics. And although there are some exercises and possible projects that you can do for the University of Michigan, Overall, I think it is about you kind of creating your own custom projects. So let's talk about a few examples. Now, if you really are just starting out with programming, you should do something very simple, right? Just do something like a rock, paper, scissors game or tic-tac-toe. It's not exciting, but if you execute it well, it really will go over a lot of complex concepts that for you are new. So it's important to kind of just layer that in. But if you're a little more familiar with programming, I would say do something like build a Flask website where you're going to learn a lot more than just programming, but also how to kind of initialize um, different libraries with Python and kind of set everything up. It is a little more complex, but it's a lot more fun personally to kind of have a basic website that you've built. So I think one of those three projects for people beginning, depending where you're at, isn't a bad option. Now, Python and Scala are more for programming, but a lot of data manipulation tends to still be in SQL and most companies will still interview you with SQL questions. So it's important that you understand how SQL works. Now, in my previous list for my roadmap, I put up Khan Academy's videos, which are free. So if that's what you'd like to do, it's great but it really is just the basics and it doesn't go over as much in terms of database design. So for a more complete course, I would use Carrero's course for SQL and database design from A to Z, because not only will you go over the basics of SQL, but you're also going to cover database design, which I think is important. The fun part about SQL is you can learn all of the basic clauses, but you'll eventually realize that the harder part is not the clauses and the statements, but actually how your data is modeled. This is something that's important to understand that SQL is less about the actual syntax and more about how you're modeling and changing the data with that syntax. You know, what's the granularity? How are you kind of integrating that granularity in between each other? That's really the more important concept to learn. So you don't just need SQL, but you need database design. And in this course, you will not only go over again, basic SQL concepts like where clauses and selects and froms and what everything means. You'll also go over some more advanced concepts, but more importantly, go over things like first, second, and third normal form and how to kind of design a database beyond just again, some select queries. If you're an analyst, then probably all you need is some select queries and understanding how to join tables and some basics such as that. But as you become a data engineer, you need to understand the different forms of modeling, whether it be data warehouse design or just a standard database. This is very standard on almost every interview you will ever do, whether it's Amazon or Facebook or anything else in between, because how you model data matters. Now, in terms of projects, if you need inspiration, I think Felipe Hoffa has got a ton. Um, he works over at Snowflake and does a great job of just curating a lot of project ideas on his medium. I would check it out. There are a lot of really fun projects there where he looks at things like GitHub and GitHub repositories and does some analytics on it, like trying to figure out which programming language in like Stack Overflow has the quickest answer. Um, so it's a lot of fun in terms of like how he thinks and just seeing different projects and just seeing him ask different questions and his process throughout that. The other tip I would recommend most people do is as you're practicing for interviews with SQL, try to answer the same question with multiple different methods of how you answer that question. Oftentimes in SQL, you can answer the same question with two or three different options and being able to do those two or three different options, I think provides you a deeper understanding of what's actually going on again on the data level and not just on the syntax level. That's just my quick tip for the day. Finally, for data warehouses, I'm going to continue to harp on this course just because to me it is a classic, which is the data warehouse fundamentals for beginners course. It will go over everything you need to understand for your classic data warehouse. Yes, are there different ways we can model data today? Sure, but almost every interview I've ever done expects some level of developing some form of star schema or something similar, because although, for example, working at Facebook, we have slightly different modeling, using something like star or snowflake schema just acts as a standard, especially when interviewing, just because it's hard to know what kind of standard anyone was using, depending on what company they worked at. So it's like using the GRE or the SATs as just a general standard. Maybe there are different sets of standards when you come internally at the company, but it's hard for you to know what those are. And most people understand star and snowflake schema. So if they give you a question on that, you should be able to answer it. In terms of projects, I would say go open up Lucidchart and practice designing a data warehouse, pick a specific application or topic that you'd like to look at. Uh, again, I've referenced in the past that a lot of people will often ask about like 
creating a data warehouse design for a college with things like grades, professors, students, classes, and courses, and things of that nature. Also, possibly picking some sort of app that you really like, like Uber, and design a data warehouse for that. And that's a great way to kind of play around with data warehousing. Now, again, this is the fundamental foundation. You've built the ground floor, you've built your foundation, everything else can kind of start building off of that. For example, personally, the next kind of level in this progression is the cloud. Learning some level of cloud, I think is important because everyone is using either AWS, uh, Azure, GCP, or something similar to one of these three. I mean, I saw someone's resume recently that said Huawei cloud. So, you know, even Huawei has a cloud that I did not know of. So you will need to understand the basics of most clouds. Now for that, I would say either look at GCP's cloud engineering certificate, which I think is great because it goes over a lot of the fundamentals, starting with things like, you know, just understanding storage and VMs and things of that nature, and then building from there and going eventually into things like Kubernetes and how you can launch all of that on GCP's cloud. Again, it's a lot of basic fundamentals that will help you then build future projects on top of it. In particular, the section that I really enjoyed here was the scaling and automation section, mostly because I keep hearing about Terraform and this was a great kind of quick course that covered a little bit of Terraform and how you can utilize it on GCP. Now, I will say that it is a pretty broad course where this covers a lot. So if you really want to dig in more into a specific thing, like for example, for me, Terraform, I would find a more specific course, but this will do a great job at just helping you understand the vastness of what you can do with something like GCP. And of course, you're probably asking at this point, wait, what about AWS? Now for that, I would recommend the Ultimate AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate for 2022. What I really like about this course is they've tried to upkeep it for the last few years. So they've done a lot more than just kind of put out a course and then let it kind of deprecate over time, but they've really tried to upkeep it. In fact, checking out, I'd say the last time they updated this was October 2021. So I think they do a really good job in terms of trying to keep you up to date, both in terms of the concepts that you'll learn, as well as making sure that you will be able to pass the exam, regardless of kind of what changes. Personally, I recently used this to kind of relook at my understanding of identity and access management, as well as digging more into some of their solutions architecture sections where they talk about event processing and high performance computing. Those sections were a great way to enhance and review a lot of the knowledge that I understand for AWS. And that's kind of why I like doing a lot of these courses is not just to learn these skills for the first time, but review them as I go forward. Because these things change all the time and AWS is constantly providing new services or changing how their current services operate. So it's important to kind of keep on top of all this information. In terms of projects here, if you've got the basics in terms of programming, database design, uh, SQL, as well as cloud, you can now start building your first website. Maybe spin something up using Flask and then launch it on some sort of like service using like Beanstalk or do something simpler, like just using an EC2 instance or try running it in a Docker container. There's a whole host of ways you could try launching a website, which in itself is a learning experience. Or if you want to try just setting up a very basic script, you can try launching something, maybe using a cloud function that then scrapes information off of websites, stores it into some sort of database that again is on the cloud and that will teach you a whole host of different things again now you're using cloud functions or maybe some sort of vm and then a database where you're going to land all this data that you can then later on do some form of analytics using something like tableau quicksight looker or some sort of other cheaper option whatever it might be that fits into your whole project plan but again now you're starting to be able to actually put together full-blown projects at this point. Again, at this point, it's probably taking you a long time to learn all of these skills. You've done a ton of troubleshooting. You've done a lot of learning and then using it. And now you're starting to understand the concept of layering. Again, now you've layered things again, like your basic skills, like programming, like SQL, like database design with things like the cloud, which will likely also force you to understand the command line, all of which build your core skill sets. And from here, you can start now further developing a lot of other more complex skill sets, such as things like learning distributed computing, machine learning, streaming, and a lot more complex concepts that kind of require you to have this base level of knowledge. You will in general need to use some sort of programming language to do most of these skill sets, or at least to interact with these systems. So once you've developed that core layer, now you can understand the cloud. You can start spinning up services on the cloud for things like Kafka or Kinesis for streaming, playing around with different ways you can kind of launch or implement machine learning models and use managed services 
for a lot of your distributed computing. But that will be in our next video on the top courses for your advanced data engineering skill sets, which the fact that I have to make two different videos for the top courses for data engineers in 2022 should tell you how many skill sets we're expected to know, but who said that six figure salary came easy. Well, guys, I will see you next time. And I just wanna say thank you so much for supporting this channel and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.